Dear Calcus 2 students, after the power series section, I can finally show you guys how we can get to the most beautiful equation in math. And yes, that's the one I have on my shirt. And this is called the Euler's Identity, so have a look right here. We are going to start with the power series of e to the x. But instead of using x, we'll be using z. So let's take a look at e to the z. And let's look at its expanded version. This right here is equal to 1 plus z. And the next one is plus 1 over 2 factorial. And then we have z squared. And, then and plus 1 over 2 factorial z to the third power. And then plus 1 over 4 factorial z to the fourth power. And then plus 1 over 5 factorial z to the fifth power. And the beauty for this one is that we can plug in anything that we want. So this is what we're going to do it. We are going to let z equal i theta. And this is the reason why we use z instead of x, because z is actually a complex variable. So this right here looks like we have e to the i theta. This right here is going to be 1 plus i theta. Just plugging i thing to all the z's, yeah? Before we continue, Let's review the powers of i. First one, i to the first power is just equal to i. Next one, i squared, by definition, this is equal to negative 1. Next, i to the third power, it means that we just take this and multiply by i. Negative 1 times i, we get negative i. Next, i to the fourth power, we take this and multiply by i. Negative i squared, which is just going to give us 1. And then i to the fifth power, we just take 1 and multiply by i. And in fact, you see that they are going to repeat, right? Like this. All right, so in fact, if you look at this right here, half of them have i, half of them they don't. This is just one, this is i theta, and this right here, i squared is actually just negative one. So let me put this down as negative, and we just have theta squared. Okay, this right here, i to the third power, we get negative i, yeah, and then theta to the third power. So it's not like alternating for now, right? You see it's positive, positive, and then negative, negative. Okay, and then the next one we have 1. So this is just theta to the fourth power. And the next one is i to the fifth power, which is just positive i. And then we have theta to the fifth power. And the next one is actually going to be a negative, all right? Cool. Now, I am going to put down all the terms that they don't have i first. So we see... This does not have i, so let's write that down. And then next, we have this term, they don't have i. So let's put down negative, and then we have 1 over 2 factorial, and then we have theta squared. Okay, this one has i, so I'm not going to put that down, but this one, it does not. And this is a positive, so I'm going to add 1 over 4 factorial, and then this is i to, this is theta to the fourth power. And then in fact, the next one is going to be this. And it actually is a negative, right? So we will just put on negative and then dot, dot, dot. So this is the first part. Now, let's put down the terms that they all have the i. So starting with this. And I'm actually going to factor out that i first. So let me just put down plus, and here we have the i. So this is just going to be theta. And then next we have this which is going to be a negative, and then we have the i, which is factored out already, so we just have 1 over 3 factorial, and then theta to the third power, and then next, it's going to be this one, it's positive, and then we have 1 over 5 factorial, theta to the fifth power, and then the next one, it's going to be this one here, it's actually a minus. All right. Now, Take a look right here. Does this remind you of any power series? This right here, in fact, it's equal to cosine theta. You see? It's alternating. And remember that I told you guys in my video on how you can remember power series? Cosine is even. So you see that you should have an alternating series. And also you should see the even factorials and also the even powers. So this right here is cosine theta. And then we add here we have the i, and if you look at this parentheses, we see this is alternating, and we have the r numbers, and this right here, yes, is exactly sine theta. So, ladies and gentlemen, e to the i theta. Believe you or not, you get cosine theta plus i sine theta. This is super, super cool. So, let me put a box and then shade it in. This is just a style of like how you, you are telling people that you are done with the proof. 
If you think calculus is just so interesting, then I will highly recommend you to check our sponsor today, Brilliant. Brilliant is an online learning platform with a big focus on interactive learning. This is from their Calculus in your natural course. This course uses visual and physical intuition to present the major topics of calculus, including limits, derivatives, integrals, and infinite series. You will walk away with a clear sense of what calculus is and what it can do. All of their courses are really fun because they will always keep you engaged by storytelling and beautiful animations. Besides calculus, they also have a lot of other classes for you to choose from, including number theory, discrete math, probabilities, and a lot more. So go ahead and take a look. And if you use the link in the description, blin.org slash blackpenrepen, then you can receive a 20% off discount. I want to thank Blin for sponsoring this video, and I also want to thank you for checking them out. So now this is what we have, e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta, and you see, we are going to plug in pi into theta. So let's put that down. We let theta equal to pi, and this is the reason why with theta, because it represents angle. And we will get e to the i pi being equal to cosine pi, and then we add it with i times sine pi. Have a look. On the left hand side, we have e to the i pi, and then this is equal to cosine pi, which is going to be negative 1. Well, sine pi is just equal to 0. 0 times i doesn't matter anymore. Have a look. e and pi are both irrational. i is imaginary. And when you combine them in this fashion, you end up with a real number, negative 1. But you know what? We are not done yet because we are going to move the negative 1 to the left hand side. So ladies and gentlemen, here we get e to the i pi's power, and then we are going to add 1 to it. And all in all, this right here is equal to 0. Have a look. Oh my goodness. This is just an equation, but it has all five mathematical constants that are considered super important, namely 0, 1, e, and i, and pi. One equation relates all five most important mathematical constants. How cool is that? Oh my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, Euler's identity.